I am just going to introduce um, Texans United for Families and the Detention Watch Network Dignity Not Detention Campaign and kind of give you a sense of where we're coming from and where we're going. Um, and we'll be happy to answer any sort of specific technical questions you have about the detention system um, afterwards. Um, but I want to make sure that we get to the other speakers who've traveled here from afar. Texans United for Families came together um, in the fall of 2007 when a group of people in Central Texas became really concerned about the fact that the Corrections Corporation of America had been contracted to hold um, families with small children in a former medium security prison in Taylor, Texas. Um, last August, on August 6th actually, 2009, the Immigration and Customs Enforcement announced that they would be reforming the entire detention system and as an act of good faith they announced that they would be release families from Hutto. So after three years of organizing against uh, family detention at Hutto and family detention in general, um, multiple vigils, monthly vigils, um, a nationwide uh, campaign against it, we succeeded in getting the families released from Hutto. And so this is a fantastic victory, I think we should still uh, applaud. However, um, in the meantime, uh, because the, the rates of families' uh, detention had fallen, uh, Hutto was beginning to be filled with uh, what we call separated women. They're not single women. They've been separated from their families, the people they were traveling with, and their families at home. Um, so now Hutto holds 490 uh, separated women and is still operating. In addition, we were not successful in ending family detention altogether because um, the Berks County Family Care Shelter in Berks, Pennsylvania still holds families. Um, and, the, and the Obama administration maintains that it needs to be able to hold families in order to deter uh, future immigration. So this is the justification that it gives, that if they were to release all the families, um, this would actually encourage um, people to cross the border. Um, this is a bit of, it's a spurious argument because most of the families who travel here from afar, if you're going to go to the trouble to move your whole family together, you're usually seeking asylum. And asylum seekers are not supposed to be detained under international human rights law. So we counted it as a partial victory, but we also understand that there's a lot more to do. And a lot of it is happening in our backyard in Texas. Um, so we started to really focus on the real problems uh, that sort of congealed around Hutto, but are actually sort of rampant in the detention system as a whole. So the first is um, the privatization of detention. So um, Texas in particular, having lots of private prisons, also has lots of private detention centers. Um, Corrections Corporation of America, Geo Group, which was formerly Wackenhut, um, they had to change names actually because they became so infamous as Wackenhut. Um, uh, core plan works here. Who else? Give me some names. I know you guys know. Emerald. Emerald, <laughs> um, Cornell, um, and a couple of others all work in Texas. And um, in the last few years, since 2005, the, the size of the Texas uh, detention system has reached 10,000, um, or has surpassed 10,000, actually. And so that's about a quarter of the 40,000 people uh, that are detained on a daily basis in the United States, um, all non-citizens. This is not including our massive uh, prison industrial complex, by the way. Um, and at the same time, in the, over the last few months, uh, or over the last couple of years, we've seen an unprecedented level of uh, resistance to uh, the rollout of immigration detention, the expansion of local law enforcement collaboration with uh, immigration policing, and um, we've had two riots at the Reeves County uh, Prison, uh, multiple hunger strikes at the Port Isabel Detention Center, which we'll hear more about. Um, and since the new year, hunger strikes at Varick and at York Detention Centers um, in New York City and Pennsylvania, respectively. Um, we've also seen civil disobedience in Florida and in New York City, um, as well as um, a massive rally in Arizona. So momentum around the country is really building towards rolling back the size of the detention system and reforming um, what has become basically a de facto uh, criminal system for what should be civil, um, a civil immigration system. Um, so where are we going from here? Well, we've decided to focus on what we think are the two sort of most egregious examples um, in, in Texas in particular. The first being the Willacy County Detention Center, or otherwise known as Tent City, otherwise known as RITMO. So this is literally a detention center formed of a number of, of tents um, in a very short period of time in order to get um, a contract um, 
from ICE in, um, was it 2005? In 2005. Um, conditions there have been reported to be absolutely horrendous. So there have been reports of maggots in the food, um, rat infestations, and, and the sort of, unfortunately, what we've been used to hearing in the detention system as a whole about lack of medical care, um, verbal abuse, um, overcrowding, uh, neglect, uh, lack of translation services, lack of psychiatric services, lack of access to legal counsel, and um, a complete flooding of immigration courts so that immigration judges don't actually have the time to listen to people's cases in detail. Um, so we wanted to argue, you know, we need better federal oversight, we need to, um, because we were pretty sure that any level of federal oversight would result in uh, Willisee being shut down. At the same time uh, that we're sort of uh, beginning to formulate this campaign, detainees at the Port Isabel Detention Center go on hunger strike. And we start hearing from our friends in the Valley, who will speak about this more in, in more detail in a minute, that people are referring to PIDC as the new Willacy. Um, so PIDC is a federally owned facility, so clearly federal oversight is not going to be enough. Um, so today in San Antonio, outside the, I, the regional ICE field office, we launched our Dignity Not Detention campaign, and we're calling for the closure of the Willacy County Detention Center and the closure of the Port Isabel Detention Center. And we feel that these two detention centers together, housing around 3,000 people, represent the worst of the detention system in general. And so we're starting there, um, and this is part of a larger national campaign that I will let Silky tell you all about. Thank you. Shut it down! Port Isabel! Shut it down! Ice raids! End them now! Hey, Ice, can't you see your jails are breaking families? Immigration is not a crime, so why are people doing time? 